Advisor is my favorite part of the day. I get to know them every single day through the circle questions, through just talking about politics or talking about what it is they did this weekend. We're gonna pepper in a little bit of something that is actually just designed to, one, get to know you and who you are and the fullness of who you are, but also what do you think about the world and, and what do you wanna do with your life and how do you wanna contribute? I think that having a relationship with the students and working at that every single day causes them to want to listen to what I say and, and want to have trust in me. I grew up in a single parent household in um, a poor area of Indianapolis. I know that there are other students that grew up in that same circumstance. They grew up in a one parent household or a no parent household um, where there are other caregivers taking care of them. Right next to those students, um, other students who grew up in a very affluent area, I always want to say, hey, other people grew up and had a different experience and they're able to achieve a measure of success. They also have different struggles than you will have. So just always reminding them of like, not everybody's like you helps to ground our conversations and, and provide for more rich experiences when we're talking to each other. It's a reflection on this year so far. So how are you doing? What's been going well so far this year? What hasn't been going well? And then how can I, as a teacher, or how can we as a school or a community support you, okay? I'm kind of from a semi-rural area, so I grew up with a kind of conservative background, and that shaped my viewpoints a lot. I try to be as open and candid with students as possible about my background, how I was raised, and how my education impacted my own viewpoints and how that was recent that I started challenging um, these things that I was taught when I was younger. I've noticed how important it is to know yourself in order to teach others. If I don't know myself, then I'm not gonna be able to present my kind of authentic self to my students and students catch on to that 100% quick. It comes down to, for me at least, building those relationships with students. That's the main thing for me that's, at the end of the day, you're two people trying to connect. So think about in the Indianapolis that you see today. What maybe issues or inequalities do you see that exist in our community right now? And then what I want you to do is uh, develop a research question and then focus your research around that. And then an end product, you can get creative with it. I know you like music, so you can make a song. As I've gone on the past year, the one-on-ones is something that I've tried to incorporate more so. It gives you time to have those conversations that a student will be, feel more comfortable to approach you, right? If I'm meeting with you one-on-one -on -one every day or every week, right? It gives you opportunity to, for me to check in with them. It's like, hey, I noticed you came in today. You just went straight, like, what's going on? Anything you want to talk about? But even if they don't want to talk, I just let them know that that avenue is open. When you have that relationship with your teacher, when you can just talk to them or come to them outside of the class, you can get more help with your studies. You can just talk to your teachers and say, hey, um, can I get help with this? I kind of don't understand this. Can you go over this with me? I enjoy coming to school now. I look forward to it. Like I have someone to talk to, at least even if I didn't have friends. When I approach students, I go in with a open mindset because I know that I know nothing about you. You know nothing about me. So let's start from there and let's get to know each other. What's your background? What's your life like? How has your experience been growing up in Indy? To learn about them and their experiences in the community and then have them bring those out in our school. And I feel like that's one of the key things to teaching is, is doing those little things for students to make them realize that you see them as a human being. If you're taking like a group shot, right? You got a bunch of different people, they're in different rows. Are you gonna pick a low aperture or a high aperture? High. Uh, Why? Because you, you want everyone to want the background blurred out. Yeah. You want all the people in focus. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Mini lesson. We got it. I had a moment with a student who um, walked out of a class yesterday. Um, he was being redirected, and what I discovered is that. Um, he didn't like how he was being redirected, and so that was a valuable piece of information that we will use moving forward in terms of trying to get him where he needs to be and doing what he needs to do. But the other piece that I got um, just from having observed him in another space was that he's been disengaging this cycle. And so I was wondering, like, what's, 
what about that shift has caused you to disengage? And because of some of the other behaviors that he's been showing that are more attention seeking, I'm guessing he just needs more, more attention. And so just having that conversation, I'm like, okay, I'm gathering clues as to how to, you know, work and get at what you need. My plan is to, uh, to use that information is to go forward and intentionally like have more touch points with him. Just saying, okay, I've talked to him a few times a day and increasing the amount of positive interactions I have with them. So I realized as well that, hmm, lately with this student, usually when I talk with him, it's like, oh, I need your headphones out. Or, hey, could you sit down right there for me? And if I'm able to just have more touch points where it's like, you're doing a good job. How's it going? I like that jacket. It might change something for him. So we'll see how it works. Those personal touches, those daily like touch points are really important for students to feel connected to the school and the work they're doing and to really um, push through some frustrations because school and learning is a lot about working through frustration. I think it's really important because so many people have been left behind. It's not an intelligence thing. And in having conversations with them, I realized you didn't really have strong relationships with any of the educators. I know that if I need extra help, I will be given extra help. If I need a quiet place, I will be given a quiet place. It makes just learning sound easier. I feel like when you are sitting in school and you are just totally drained and sad and not motivated in life, you might drop out because school was just not your thing. And I feel like school can be anyone's thing if it's fitting your needs and if it's fun or interesting or just getting the help that you need. I think that the most powerful thing that brings me back to the equity mindset is thinking about trauma specifically. Instead of asking, you know, what's wrong with this kid? It's like, what happened to this kid? And it's my job to figure out what that is because they're in a space where they may not even know themselves. So to figure it out and then to try and provide them with what they actually need. I look for trauma more now than I had ever before. I realize now more that behaviors don't just come from nowhere. Most, I would say every kid wants to be a good student. Mm -hmm.